All right. Uh, prayer has become a cliche in today's politically correct society. Think about who prays for you. Huge deal. People, you know, the newscaster and all these, oh, our prayers are with them. I don't want your prayers. You just send a curse to me, and now i got to break it. You know, think about these. There's Hindus, Islams, Buddhists, uh, yogas, and, and New Age, and, and, and all of a sudden they're praying for you. What do you think they just put on you? They, la- they loaded a bunch of curses on you, people. Think about this. You need to take control of your environment and break that stuff. Somebody says, oh, I'm sorry for you, uh, for your tragedy. I'm going to pray for you. Uh-uh. It's okay to say no. If you know they're not a, they're, they're, their God is not Yeshua, it's okay to say no. You're defending your faith. This is reality, people. You need to wake up to this. We don't let anybody just pray for us. You're dying in, in the hospital and you're believing God. Your faith is out there. Your family. All of a sudden, some uh, guy from another religion wants to come and lay hands on you. Absolutely not. Get away from me. Uh, you lay hands suddenly on nobody and not on me, buddy. You're going to have to have this attitude, people. Because the, the, the devil don't play by any rule book, and he can alter them at any time, as long as you give him the opening. I'm telling you, this is downright serious business. You let nobody pray for you. Our nonchalant society about we'll pray for you, uh-uh. Watch the news, watch the TV, no, absolutely not. It is the correct thing to say when tragedy strikes individuals, families, and communities. Well, guess what? They just loaded more curses on that problem. They just escalated the issue in the spiritual realm. Can, can you give an hmm? Well, these people over here that, that got shot in the, in the school. Now all of a sudden, all these people around the world are praying for them because of this tragedy. Well, curses are coming on them because who's their God with a little G? See, the God with a little G. They're praying for their God, which they think is a big G, but it's the little G. So they're laying things on you. They're speaking words, words of witchcraft. We have to have a training here about words of witchcraft and Christian witchcraft by the tongue. We need to have a teaching like that because that's rampant in the church. Okay, let's move on. What is prayer? What is prayer is not warfare. Okay, we're going to start covering some stuff here. Um, Okay. Let's get started on the, on the heavy stuff. Okay, so pay attention real closely to this. As with conventional prayer, devotional prayer, and prayers of petition that believers communicate to God, uh, prayer is not warfare, is the direct communication believers use to exert their God-given authority with power to subdue the power from the forces of the kingdom of darkness. Separation here. You pray to God here. You command here without God's intervention. He's already there. He's already given you the authority. You go and face the enemy. You don't do what the uh, uh, Christian don't do. Oh, Lord, please help me, help me. Get the devil off my back. Absolutely not. That's a fallacy. That's a fallacy in the Christian church. You do not ask God to come get the devil off your back. He's giving you that authority. That's why you all experience that, well, that nothing happened, I still feel something. Yeah, you feel something because your, exor- your authority is not exerted. It's not there. That's right. this, is, this is the actual downright truth. Without this exertion of authority that we're showing you. He's, he's there. Remember, uh, for the, those of you that came to PYSE, the little paddle ball, you rebuke the devil. He's going to go because Jesus' name. That authority is going to rebuke the devil. He's going to go, but he's like a paddle ball. He's going to come back and hit you. And you're going to be doink, 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 doink. That's the way it works, people. It, without exerting the authority, you're not getting anywhere. So, the separation, your conventional, your devotional, your prayers of petitioning is one thing to when you communicate with the Lord. Now, over here, P-I-N-W, you say to the devil, in the name of Jesus, I command you. I have full authority in the name of Jesus Christ, and I command you to leave now. You exert your authority directly to them. You speak directly to that. Okay? 
We're going to give more examples. In addition to prayer, prayer works side by side with warfare prayer, but the difference is that you directly communicate with the forces of darkness and you command their works and effects to be destroyed, as opposed to petitioning God. Use both interchangeably. We have prayers over here. We're going to go over a bunch of examples for you to start working on your prayers. You're going to have homework when you leave here. Number one, the enemy's aware that you're, you're getting some training that's going to be a threat to him, and you're going to have to stand up for yourself. Number two, you're going to go out and you're going to start working, asking the Holy Spirit to help you develop your prayers. Because I'm going to tell you, if you don't do this, there's no use of you being here. Because you need to learn this and you need to apply this. This is practical application. Okay, basic prayer examples. In this example, this is going to be a very simple one. But in this example, uh, you will pray for someone who has a spirit of infirmity. The person has been getting sick for their stomach and, and doctors cannot find any sicknesses to treat. But what do you think that is? That's a spiritual condition, people. It's not a physical ailment. Doctors can't find nothing. Yeah, there's some problems that are very difficult to find. But in, in general, if they can't find it right off the bat, people have uh, spirits that are plaguing them. Open prayer. Okay, so here's where we're going to operate. We're going to operate uh, by constructing your prayers. You open in prayer to the Lord. Then you engage in warfare. That's the second part. And then you close in prayer to the Lord. And that's what all these prayer examples are about. Okay? So, Lord Yeshua, I thank you that you bore the stripes on your back for our sicknesses and diseases, according to 1 Peter 2.24 and Isaiah 53.5. And this applies to Jane. Our, our sick person is Jane. You see what's being done here? I'm going to tell you, when I hear prayers, I don't hear the authority and I don't hear the scriptural references. That is a bad place to be for a believer, especially a well-versed believer that's been around for a while. If you're not exerting that word, that's your power. Where, where do you think this sword came from? What do you think this represents? It's the word of God. If you're not exerting that, on your mouth, the word of God. So Isaiah 50, uh, Isaiah 2.20, uh, 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes we, we are healed. Isaiah 53.5, by his stripes we were healed. So it's Yeshua coming, taking all the stuff on his back for us, all the torture and the torment for us to be healed. So you're claiming the word for this person, Jane. You're interceding at this point. You're praying on behalf of them. Warfare prayer, I now speak in power to the spirit of infirmity. You can call it out by name if you know it. And I curse you and I come and, and uh, curse you to die at the roots. And I command the spirit of infirmity to leave Jane now in Jesus' name. You directly speak to the enemy. I'm not praying over Jane and giving petitions to God. You're speaking directly to the kingdom of darkness that's attacking this person. I know this is going to take time. This is a process for you guys, okay? But this is what needs to be done. If you're going to experience fruit in the spiritual realm by being victorious, by, war, by warfare, you're going to have to exert your authority here like this. Okay? Closing prayer. Lord Yeshua, I thank you that I have all authority over the spirit of infirmity and over all the power of the enemy, according to Luke 10, 19. Amen. See, so exerted the word, reminded God, hey, Lord, you gave me this authority. I'm using it. I'm using it. Okay? And see, Christian Dome, leave out this part right here. And this is the meat. This is the meat of the prayer to make the enemy go. Are you all with me? Okay? Come on, wake up. I want people to wake up. I want you to understand this. This is real. This is not, you know, just another message or another teaching. This is real deal. I want you to learn to apply this. Is that what you're going to hang, hang down? Yes, we have uh, sample prayers. Uh, this prayer is not on there, but there's three other ones, and we're going to go over them. Okay, let's move on. we got a lot more material to cover. When in prayer, always ask the Holy Spirit for revelation. Revelation is the biggest thing that you need, and who is the one that gives it to you? Who's your comforter and your teacher? The Holy Spirit. Spirit. You've got to be with Him just... Always by his side. Hey, Holy Spirit, what's going on here? Show me this. Give me a revelation. What's this problem? What do I need to pray for? You know, you got to keep that communication link. Boom, 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 boom. All day long. 
You get off track, you start doing your job, you do your job four, eight hours a day, then you connect back with the Lord. Hey, Lord, I'm here, you know, what's going on? There's this problem, what, give me revelation. You need to get revelation. You need to be able to hear in your spirit when He speaks to you. If you're null in your spirit, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. If your uh, spirit is desensitized to His voice, this is a crucial, crucial step. You need to start asking the Holy Spirit to help you to gain your hearing back in your spirit. Remember last, in PYSE, I talked about having allergies all the time and I take an antibiotic and it's, uh, it's, it doesn't work. That's what Christians are like. It, they're immune to it. They're immune to hearing. They're immune to uh, uh, being sensitive in the spirit, the perception, the uh, discernment. Okay? All right. John 14, 26. But the Comforter. Who's the Comforter? All right. Which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I say unto you. He's the one who communicates. He's your connection between what the Father says. You've got to be in tune, in tune in your spirit. Very critical. You know me, as you saw my last yeshiva, I break things down. What happened here? Uh, Brian? Oops. There we go. Comforter. G3875, paracletos, an intercessor, counselor, advocate, comforter. That's what he is to you. He's your advocate. He's your comforter. Why we would not utilize him, I have no clue. You have to utilize the Holy Spirit. He's in this whole plan. Without him, you know, you better not get in deliverance ministry or healing ministry. You better be careful. You're an open target. You're going to get hit. You're going to get hit hard if you don't operate in the Spirit. Without Him, what does the Word say? We can do nothing. All right? All right. When praying to, for someone and when possible, always try to get uh, the person's name and ask permission to pray and intercede on their behalf. Why? Bingo. Bingo. They have a will. What if they don't want you to pray for them in the first place? What if they had a bad day? They just, your prayer is going to be non effect. What are you wasting your words for? It's like throwing pearls before swine. Throw them down there, let them get trampled on. Uh, I, I, I need not to because I, but my time, I'm sorry. Okay? I want to awaken you to that concept there. Your will is so important. We're going to talk about the will later on. Okay, an opening, uh, on opening and closing prayers, always report to quoting Scripture when applicable. The Word weakens the enemy's grasp. It's all about the Word. What's that sword? The Word on the tip of your tongue is a sword. You need to go cut them down. Hatchet them up. Chop them down. If there's many of them, chop them down. Okay, prayer facts. On warfare prayers, always resort to using the weapons of warfare from Scripture, the bloodline, the sword of the Spirit. Bind them, rebuke them, command them. Why? That's what the Word says. That's what Jesus did. He commanded. He rebuked. You know, He tells us that the, the sword of the Spirit is, our, is, our, is the Word of God. His blood. He spilled His blood for us. That blood defeated the enemy. Okay? Also call the name... Uh, call by name every spirit, sickness, cars, etc. You can, if you know it. If there's something attacking you, uh, maybe a little infirmity or headache or whatever, call it by name. Rebuke it. Rebuke that spirit of infirmity. Yeah, I'll have to hold. I'll have to hold. I know this is getting some of you and you all want to, I know. Okay, we're going to look at a chart here. Okay, this is just a small little snippet of things you can rebuke. Okay, let's look at the first one here. If we look at uh, spirits of infirmity, what are they? Sicknesses, cancer, depression, blood pressure. People are sick all the time. Rebuke those spirits when you pray for somebody. Religious spirits, Catholicism, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses. You're going to be around all of those people. They're gods with the little G. Remember the little G? Okay. You don't want them praying for you. 
Cursing spirits, uh, drive-by curses, lying tongue, words of witchcraft. The scripture is very clear that, that words are like witchcraft. Somebody, uh, even a believer, will come against you and throw a curse on you. If you don't believe that, you better get in prayer and ask the Lord. Because that's how it operates. Uh, drive-by tongue, you know what I call that? Those people that curse you out there on the road because they think you're driving too slow, you're blocking them. You better break that curse because they're cursing you and they're, they're throwing that birdie in the air against you. There you go. That's exactly true. I thought we were a little bit beyond that, but I guess not. <laughs> okay? But seriously, somebody curses you, I'd never allow that. I see them, that somebody uh, abruptly wants to pass me and all that, and I had a truck one day, the other day, just go like that, and, and he came on side of me, and he cut me off, this big old truck bigger than mine. And I just said, Lord, bless them. But I rebuke those spirits. I bind them down. I break every word curse according, according to Isaiah 54, 17. Any work informed against me shall not prosper. Every tongue that comes against me I shall condemn in judgment. For I, mine is the heritage of the Lord and by righteousness thereof. See what you do? You just chop it down with the sword of the Spirit. Apply the weapons in your mouth, people. Apply the weapons. Don't let these little incidents go by, these little things that seem non-trivial. Because let me tell you, those are important because he'll just accumulate those curses on you. He'll accumulate them. If you're not taking care of them, you're not taking them down. They're there. They're going to bother you. Okay? Uh, occult spirits, witchcraft, new age, divination. We're going to go over a divination story here in a little bit that Paul had to deal with. Paul the Apostle. Okay, we got spirits of anger, hatred, jealousy, blame, bitterness. You, you, I could probably say a number of you in here have experienced this from other believers in the church. It's Christian witchcraft. Christians coming against Christians. The tongue. The tongue is a fire which no man can contain except God. James 3. See, you've got to have that word in you. It's got to be right here. You speak it out, break it, quote it. See, that's why Christians get hurt because they don't do that stuff. And they wind up going through these turmoils all the time because they're not taking their rightful authority. Okay? Uh, spirits of perversion, rape, inside fornication. Is that still happening in your life? you got spirits. you got something that's plaguing you. Spirits, of, uh, spirits from objects, demonic game, occult games, uh, dream catchers. You have any type of that stuff in your house? You better get rid of it, man. I'm telling you. You better repent and get rid of this stuff. These objects here are no different than somebody practicing voodoo in Africa and putting a curse on a bunch of items that they have and they buried them. You know what they do with those relics now? Those relics are uncovered by archaeologists and they're put in a museum for you to go pay to go see them. You realize that? I'm serious. If you all have been, we've had to repent to go see the mummies. This plane in Dallas. Many years ago, we repented. The Lord convicted us. I'm not playing. This is a real deal. Why? You're going to patronize death. You're paying homage to Satan by looking at death and who they believe in, which is Satan. These are real. People get attacked by these things. And you all need to wake up to these kind of, these kind of things. Uh, okay, spirits of music, occultic songs, symbolism, paraphernalia. Yep, the enemy has the same access to you. You can see children demonized by these things. And the parents wonder what's going on. Oh, they're just teenagers. It's all right. No, it's not all right. Because Satan's got a clutch on your child, and he's going to take him down when he can. All right. It is of your best interest to know your environment and what kind of spirits are around you. Ask the Holy Spirit for discernment. You need to ask. Something's bothering you. You just feel a little bad inclination about something. That's, that's the Holy Spirit talking to you, man. You need to pay attention to that. And you need to respond to it. Say, Holy Spirit, what's going on here? Show me. Reveal to me. Revelation, remember? We seek the Holy Spirit for revelation. Because we don't know that stuff. How can we know all the spiritual stuff that's out there? We, absolutely not. But He knows it. And He will reveal it to you. Whatever you need to know. All right. Warfare prayer is not. Is not. I want to make this very clear. Is not petitioning God. 
You don't come during your times of trouble, of warfare, and start petitioning God. Lord, help me, please. Lord, help me. The devil's on my back. No. Fallacy. That's not what you do in Scripture. Jesus spoke directly and He commanded. That's your responsibility. I want to make this absolutely clear. This is very important. Absolutely clear. You need to uh, come directly to the enemy on your own. You have all Jesus back up. He's given you the authority. It's all there. But you have to step out by yourself and you have to attack the enemy. Okay? All right. It is, it is pointless to petition God for help when He has already given you us the power to use His name. He's given it to you. We're just trying to teach you how to use it because you, you have it too. There's no difference between you and me. We're all in Christ's body. The same thing He gave you, He gave me. The same thing He gave me, He gave you. No difference. Now you got to use it. Okay, warfare prayer is not begging God in prayer. My goodness, people, I've heard this in prayer circles. When are we going to learn? God's children are beggars? Think about this. We're begging. I'm going to tell you something. You hear somebody begging in a prayer circle? You need to, in love, pull them aside, give them a little education in the Scripture. I'm, not, I'm serious. This is downright serious here. You need to take them aside. Because that's polluting that whole pool of prayer right there. We don't, we don't beg God for that. He's given us everything. We need to apply it. Begging God is also pointless because He is expecting you to stand up to the enemy to fight your own battles. Yeah, He's there. Don't get me wrong. He's there. But He expects you to do it. Direct combat. Direct conflict. I come against you in the name of Jesus. You've got to exert that authority. Some of, you, some of you will or have in the past experienced somebody manifesting. If you didn't do that and you get another opportunity, you better take advantage of that opportunity. Take that spirit down. The days we're living in right now, the things that are happening currently in the government and worldwide, let me tell you, there's an onslaught of spirits around Christians. They are attacking them by droves. And I could only tell you because of experience. That's all I know. I see it all the time. Every week, every day, on the TV, on the radio, at work, go to the hospital, everywhere I'm seeing manifestations. You're seeing them too, but you may not be recognizing it. Your perception needs to change. You need to ask the Holy Spirit. Your perception needs to change inside of you. Okay, warfare prayer is not about flooding heaven with prayers when He has already given you the authority. Some people say, man, I prayed all day. Well, what happened? Well, nothing happened. I've heard that. What are you praying all day for? In fact, I've heard that many, many times through the years. And my, my question is always, well, what, what, what happened? Well, nothing but the Lord is graceful and gracious. Hmm. Yeah, he is. I know he is. is that the, did, did that resolve your problem? No. Okay. Well, what are you doing with your authority then? Uh, authority? It looked like a deer in the headlights. Authority? Seriously, I'm not joking. I'm not making this to be fun. This is not a fun thing. This is horrible. But these are things you see in ministry. These are things you see in real world. That's right. I think the counseling term is learn how to help. The what? Learn helplessness. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay, you can exert your authority directly to the enemy. Warfare prayer, warfare prayer is not fighting the enemy physically. I want to tell you again. I have heard this about a dream, and they woke up, and they started giving judo and karate kicks and <laughs> high fives and, you know, and wah, you know, doing the thing like that. People, how ridiculous is that? My goodness, let's wake up. Again, grab that person over in love. Say, hey, you don't do that. The Word says you don't do that. The enemy's got a scheme on you. He thinks that you're fighting a demon. You're not. 
It has nothing to do with it. And I'm going to prove it to you two ways. This is a fallacy because Ephesians 6.12 and 2 Corinthians 10.3 clearly states that we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. You see anybody doing that in your uh, circle of Christians? Pull them aside. Talk to them. Make sure they understand that they're in error. And it's okay. They may be a young believer. They may be learning. That's okay. We're there to sharpen each other. I'm here to sharpen you. You know, if you have anything to sharpen me, I got people out here who, who talk to me and they sharpen me. I'm no different than anybody else. Come on. Let's wake up to this. Let's help our brothers and sisters. This is not kiddie games. This is not uh, uh, Sunday Bible school. This is not, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of Christian activities. It has nothing to do with this. This will not, that will not penetrate the, the kingdom of darkness. Okay, moving on. Warfare prayer is not part two. Warfare prayer is not praying and exerting, uh, expecting the Lord to get the enemy off of you. We just talked about that. That's not his job. He's like this. You have the authority. What are you doing? Don't look at me. What are you looking at me for? Turn around and face the enemy. I talked last week about uh, the Roman soldiers when God had removed his hand from from Joshua and, and, the, and the Israelite tribe, when they left Jericho and Achan brought to the, the things that cursed into the camp. He cursed the whole camp. God removed his hand of protection. So they go out and they chase Ai, the small tribe. They were going to wipe them out. They went over there. Ai came on a surprise, ran out with their soldiers, scared the daylights out of them. They all ran, turned their backs, and Ai killed 36 of their best soldiers. Then um, the, the elders and the, the leaders, they're on the ground. They're renting their, 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 their garments and they're throwing dirt on their head. They're on the ground like they used to do back then. You've all read the Old Testament enough. You all, you all know what they did. Down there, throwing dirt. Why, God, why? Take us back to Egypt. <laughs> Take you back to Egypt. So God says, you know, it sounds kind of like the Lord was sarcastic. He says, Joshua, what are you doing down there? Get up off of there. You know, read that part. It sounds like he was being sarcastic with them. He says, Joshua, what are you doing down there? Get up off of you. What are you doing on the ground? You, allowed, you brought us over here to kill us and to defame your name. Now he's pointing the finger. To defame your name here in the land. How foolish was that? Send us back to where we came from. No. The reason this happened, because you got a thing accursed in your camp. And we're going to talk about curses next. Big deal. I won't go any further. I just wanted to prove my point. Because he has already defeated, the, uh, defeated Satan at the cross, the blood. you got to get that bloodline. you got to get that sword of the Spirit. Right here. Talk it. Okay? All right. Yeshua now has given us power and responsibility to overcome the enemy. So, today, for those new that are here, not the ones from PYSE about a month ago, for you that are new today, I'm going to challenge you. You need to go out and you, start, you need to start taking your responsibility. I know all of your houses are not clean. I know there's things there. Uh, we get calls from people that were surprised that they're having demonic problems. It's like, wow, these people? Wow. What's going on over here? All of a sudden you find out there's a whole mess going on in people's lives. If you drive by a neighborhood, look at every house, I guarantee you there's a tor turmoil in every house in, in some way, fashion, and form. And it's got activity in it. When I drive by neighborhoods, I look at them, and I'm just like, man, problem here, 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 here. There's a problem everywhere. In every house. The enemy's active in every house. Warfare prayer is not a distorted, assumed understanding of Scripture. This is called error. There's a lot of assumed, distorted understandings. Well, my friend said, read the Bible and they told me this. And well, this and this and this. And you're listening to them like, hmm, well, let's go back to the root. Let's go back to the scripture. Okay, what does it say? And you're having to listen to them and prove them wrong. Again, take them to the side in love. Hey, brother, I got to tell you, the word says this, not this. You see what I'm getting at? That's how we need to, sharp, uh, iron sharp, uh, need to sharpen iron. So, 
For this reason, so many prayers are unanswered. I'll guarantee you, if we had a poll, probably every one of you would say that you had a prayer that's unanswered for some reason. And it's probably error. We've all erred. I've erred in the past when I was young, growing up, trying to learn, uh, calling on the Lord. Hey, Lord, show me this. What's going on here? Why is this happening? Why did this manifest? I don't know. What's going on? You need to see my testimony in the last yeshiva for PYSE. Okay, Talk about all of that stuff. It's real. And you know what? I called and he answered. Bit by bit, but he answered. He answered on time. I'm going to tell you something. He answers you not on your timing. He answers you on his timing. You don't get pushy and shovey with, with the Lord. He's going to answer you when he's ready to answer you, when he knows the time is right. Learn the weapons of warfare from Scripture and, f and formulate your plan of attack with precision. I'm telling you, precision might sound like a far word for some of you, but that's what you have to do. The prayers here that you're going to take home, part of your homework, you need to start working. You have questions, you come see me. We need to figure out a plan for you. You need to be proactive. We're going to show you about being proactive here in a minute. They're very important. Your enemy will be more cautious when he knows you can, you can target your attacks on him and destroy his effects. Amen. Cause and effect. He builds a scheme. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. I'm going to get his kid here. It's going to cause this cause, and it's going to have this effect. It's going to affect the parents. The mother is going to have a breakdown. We're going to work on a breakdown. And because the kid is in drugs, and now he's into heavy metal music, and he looks like a devil himself, and, and the father doesn't know what to do. He has to go to work. You see how the enemy, you got to think like this. What is the enemy doing? He's building a scheme. He's getting you all bunched up in the family. Get external friends, external families, all bunched up to build a scheme and start havoc. Got to start thinking like this. You got to start thinking militantly. If not, that's the way the enemy thinks. And he's going to build these schemes and he's going to take you down. Very serious matter. You need to start changing your mindset. That's why I put the challenges up front here. Because a lot of believers have not heard this kind of stuff. They even haven't heard the words and the meanings and definitions and all that kind of stuff. But you need, you're doing today. So today you're responsible because you already heard it and the kingdom of darkness knows that you're learning this stuff now. So it's a matter of you jumping on the bandwagon and getting involved and not sitting in the back seat letting it go by. Passivity will take you down. Slothfulness, slumber, sleep, laziness will take you down. Satan will take you down. All right. Let's rehash the biblical weapons from PYSE. I'm going to go over this real quick. This is just kind of a refresher. Why? Because PYSE and, and warfare prayer are hand in hand. They work together intricately. They are like a soul tie. They operate together. They are knitted together. Because you're still commanding over here, protecting your environment, your family, your job. Over here, you're talking directly to the enemy. You're still talking directly to the enemy in PYSE. Over here in warfare, you're still doing the same. But we're, now we're going to learn more weapons. I'm just going to rehash the ones from last time. All right, the sword of the Spirit. Ephesians 6.17. Uh, this is what you used to break the schemes and the curses. What did I just talk about in that little example prayer? We broke it with the sword of the Spirit. Okay, uh, Speaking creates in the spiritual. When we speak, talked about creating, we talked about God. We, uh, 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 speaking to uh, uh, speaking out that it, everything was and it, uh, everything is and it was and, and it was good. He was acceptable to him. He spoke to create. See, the, the, the world was here, it was null and void, and God came to make it rehabitable. He spoke all of that into existence. Matthew 12, uh, 21, 19, Jesus spoke uh, to, uh, to the fig tree, let no fruit grow on it. He cursed it. He's given an example. What did I talk a while ago about fruit? You, not, you need to bear some fruit in your life. Each one of you are responsible for a ministry He's given you. He's given you talents. He's given you uh, different words, different teachings, different things that you need to go out and start applying them. If you're setting on them, you need to wake up, start asking the Holy Spirit again, what is your call? What is your purpose? And where do I fit in in the body of Messiah? 
Seriously, every one of you needs to do that. If you're sitting on the sideline, life is comfortable, no problems, well, you're no threat to the enemy. Just being blunt. It's just the way it is. Okay, what about faith? What can I say about faith? Matthew 21, 21, we have to speak in faith, not doubting. The enemy of faith. Uh, I don't know where you're at. If you have a, a uh, problem right now understanding or accepting some of these concepts and teachings I'm giving you, you really need to come before the throne. Come before the throne that you may obtain, obtain mercy and find help in a time of need. Quote the scripture. Put God in remembrance of his word. It's key. Hebrews uh, 11, 13, through the, wor- through the wor- faith, the worlds were framed. What did God do? He spoke in faith. It was created. Voila. The worlds. It doesn't say world, not the earth. The worlds. You get a chance. Read this, the second half of uh, Proverbs 8. It's fascinating. Where the Holy Spirit was first with God when he uh, formed the worlds. Wonderful. Man, you need to get into second half of Proverbs 8. I love it. I read it all the time. But you look at God's creation, how he worked, how the Holy Spirit was right there, being his handyman, his crafty man. Always delighting in his work, his marvelous work. Okay? Uh, Without faith, it's impossible to please him. In faith, believers are to speak and create in the spiritual realm. Okay, we got to move fast here. Uh, Binding and loosing, let's let's take a look at the binding process. I'm going to kind of... Go through this real quick. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Vardrona, for flesh and blood did not reveal it unto thee. So who reveals it to you? The Holy Spirit. Amen. He's telling you right there. It's plain and simple. By faith, uh, by, by my Father which is in heaven, uh, 16, 18, And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, Simon, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates will have, of hell will not prevail. Matthew 16, 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Direct, s- simultaneous communication between heaven and your faith. Amen. There's no gap in between there. There's no break. It's a direct communication. We have direct communication with the heavenlies. We need to utilize it. All right. Uh, now let's add more biblical weapons to our toolbox. All right, let's go on. Praise and worship. I'm going to go real quick. Uh, Acts 16.25, a paraphrase, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, and everyone's yeah. bands were free. How many of you, brothers and sisters, believe your hands are bound by the enemy? Or a family member? Or your kids? Because they are. You can break them. The power of prayer of agreement. How many of you called up somebody and say, hey, we need to pray and agree? One could put a thousand, two put, could put ten thousand to flight. What are you doing? You're putting demons to flight. You're breaking them off. The concept you need to go when you get into uh, intercession or, or prayer with, in agreement with somebody. You need to call somebody and get an agreement going on. Just take them down, break them off. Very important. Okay, Matthew 18, 19, if two shall agree on earth as teaching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done to them of my Father. Where? Which is in heaven. You speak it down here and it happens up there. Direct communication, just like binding and loosing. That makes sense to you? Two direct communications. And we don't lose, uh, we don't lose connection like direct table, like direct cable. Or my internet connection. <laughs> we don't lose connection. We don't have to call up the company. Hey, Lord, uh, connection broke again. Can you fix it? Yeah, I'll fix it in a couple of minutes. Okay. No, it don't happen. Direct communication. Seriously, I'm being serious. Direct communication. You need to take advantage of it. Now we're going to learn the dunamis power, dual power, the exosia and the dunamis. We're going to talk about this because this is powerful. And when you learn this and the words behind it, you'll be able to structure your prayers with exertion and with miraculous power. Okay? That's what this is about. Okay, power. Uh, G1411 is dunamis, force. First word off the bat, force. What is Jesus? He's a force. 
His name's a force. His power's a force. Everything's a force. Specifically, mi uh, miraculous power, usually by implication, a miracle itself. The miraculous power of Yeshua, the dunamis power. This is what you use when you go and pray for people. You claim the dunamis power over them. Break the power of the enemy. Okay? Ability, abundance, meaning, might, might, might mightily, mighty, mighty deed, uh, worker of miracle or, or of miracles, power, strength, violence. Huh, violence and God's force. Mighty, wonderful work uh, by implication to disturb. We're going to talk about these. All of these apply to the, the dunamis name. And, and when you exert that dunamis power. Okay. All right. Now, I want everybody to get excited here. If you don't get excited about Jesus and his power, I don't know what's going to excite you, people. That's right. But let's talk about this for a second. The dunamis power is the force. Okay. He's the miraculous. Okay. Wonderful counselor, miracle healer, deliverer. The, me the meaning. Who's the meaning? The meaning of you, the meaning of life, the meaning of this world, the meaning of heaven. Okay, it's the meaning. The ability. He has all abilities given it to you. If you're not using it, that's where you're lacking. The abundant. You, you have a lack. You better start asking why you're, you have a lack if you're in the, abundance, in the abundance of the kingdom of God. There's probably a spiritual principle behind your attack. The mighty. Mighty what? The mighty one of Israel. You know, think of this word. Uh, wonderful work. His wonderful work. His marvelous works. He created everything and it was good. Okay? And the disturber. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay. All right. So in the New Testament, dunamis occurs 123 times in 116 verses. And the exosia occurs 103 times in 93 verses. Okay. There is... Uh, what I want to say about this here, um, I'm not here to bash anybody. I'm just here to say, out of these 126 times, dunamis and exosia, I can count on my hand who I've heard mention those words. Think about that for a second. Okay? Okay. Because we read uh, the word that says authority or power in the scriptures, but we never look into really deep into what, what what's his true meaning is. So, what's so the we between and we're going to go over that. Oh. I'm just telling you, if you don't have people who could, you can hear say things like this. That's this is what God's word is all about. I'm not doing nothing no different. I'm just digging. Okay. There's one more word in Scripture uh, that complements dunamis and exosia, which is authority. It has the same Strong's definition. That's when we see a, a, a authority, when they speak with authority. By what authority do you have, the, the, uh, uh, the Sadducees would tell Jesus? By what authority? Okay. Well, in, in Mark 1.22, And they were astonished at the doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, that's exosia, and not as the scribes. So if the people thought that the scribes had authority, it was rubbish here. Because Jesus just blew everything out of the water. Okay, authority. Uh, uh, Greek, 1849, and, and Greek, 1832, the root meaning, exosia, in the same sense of ability, privilege, i.e. force, capacity, competency, freedom, objectively uh, mastery, uh, Concerning magistrate, superhuman, a potentate, one with a lots and lots of authority. Token of control, delegated influence, authority, jurisdiction, liberty, power, right, and strength. Why am I showing you all of these things? Because these need to get down in your spirit so you can know what it is to apply it when you come in warfare. You've got to have that to back you up. If you're floating around with authority and power and nothing's happening... You're not exerting. This should get you excited to exert that authority using these names. I want the scales to come off of your eyes and off your mind, you know, so you can start thinking this way. Okay, every believer's responsibility to exert their exosia power and operate in the dunamis power simultaneously. 
And there's uh, sample uh, uh, prayers here that you're going to take home, and you'll see that. I've kind of tried to highlight it, uh, underline it, highlight it, and all these different things so you can see. Hopefully, we have enough time to go over it. All right. I did something again. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, you have the power to command. Let's go over this. Let's see the, uh, how, power, uh, how Paul handled the, the soothsayer, spirit of divination. You know what? We got Christians going to... Uh, what do you call these? Uh, palm, readers. palm readers and all that. Spirit of divination. Christian has no right. business. If you've been there, let me tell you. If any of you have been there and you have not really taken care, ah, oh, I repented of it. Well, did you really repent of it? Okay, first of all, did you repent of it? Did you uh, command those demons to leave? Did you break soul ties? But you didn't. Those demons are still around. And they'll come back later. And they're going to hunt you. Guaranteed. If you don't take care of those spirits up front, they will come back. They'll be patient. I'll have to get you later, Lori. Just write it down, please. Okay. Acts 16, 16. And it came to pass as when uh, we went to pray, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us. Met who? Paul and the apostles. Met them. Which brought uh, her masters much gain by soothsaying. She, he was making money. These guys were making money off of this woman. Tell them the future. Fortune tell them. Okay, pay up. She already told you. Pay up. They were collecting money. Acts 16, 17, the same followed Paul and us. Who is Paul and us? The disciples. And cried, saying, These men are of the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Now, I want to show you something here, because this is what the enemy does to you. I know some of you have experienced this. Okay. I got the little word here, cried, underlined, and here's the meaning, and I'm going to give you the full meaning. I didn't write it here. Cried is the word, Greek, 2986, kraso, to croak as a raven. That spirit was doing some horrible noise that absolutely grieved Paul. And I'm going to show you here in a second. He was grieved. This is not nothing you just read over, brothers, sisters. You need to pay attention to these details. Because that spirit followed them for days and grieved Paul. Paul, the one we look at with all the authority and, and, and the wisdom and all the stuff that God gave him. And he's being grieved and attacked by spirits? Absolutely. He's not exempt. Just like you're not exempt. Okay? All right. Acts 16, 18. And this said, uh, and this did uh, she many days. Okay? But Paul being grieved. Why was he grieved? Paul, had, Paul could exert his authority, his dunamis, and his exosia. Why did he let him go for days? But grieving him, bringing him to a point of grief. Turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Who's he? The Spirit. Spirit that was taunting him. See, you all have been taunted and taunted and taunted over and over again. And you're not exerting your exosia and your dunamis to take care of the problem. It's at the tip of your tongue, people. Now let's see how Yeshua handled the demoniac. Famous story. You probably read it a million times yourself. But we're going to look at some details. I'm not so concerned about all the story. I want to look at some details here. It's all in the details. Luke 8, 27, and when he went forth to land, there, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wore no clothes. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't give you the full meaning of the, uh, of the uh, I meant to uh, give you the meaning of uh, cr uh, cried. Okay, so cried, uh, it's a verb. It's to croak as a raven or scream, i.e. Gen generally to call aloud shriek, exclaim, entreat, cry, cry out. This spirit was antagonizing and grieving Paul so bad by the noises it was making. If you've ever had a spirit coming around causing noises, you need to take authority over that thing. People have had that before. So it's like, what's that disturbance? What, what's going on over here? You can hear some. Rebuke it. Why do you think he took the wall? I don't know. Okay, what did I do here? 
Okay, let's see how he handled the demoniac. Okay, so, and when he went to forth the land and met him out of the city, a, man, a certain man had devils long time and wore no clothes, neither uh, abode in his house, but in the tombs. We're going to go over why he was ab abiding in the tombs. Here's a detail for you. This is where occultic people like to hang out because of the spirits are there and they hang out among the tombs uh, and on cursed ground. I can't tell you how important this is, this is for you to understand, for you to walk on cursed ground. And a lot of Christians are to blame. I spoke about it the last time. They'll walk with no thinking of any spiritual consequences whatsoever. That's far from their brain. They'll walk in bad stores. They'll walk in haunted houses. They'll walk in all of this stuff. Even support uh, Planned Parenthood or different things like that. They're walking on cursed ground. They're walking amongst cursed people. And if you're not watchful of that, you're going to receive something from the dark side. Okay? I want to wake you up to this concept. This is not a playing game. There's actually uh, witches and, and curanderos, uh, the mix Mexican healers, and different practices, santeria and all that. They hang around in the tombs. They know the dirt is cursed, and they'll plant a curse on you. I'll tell you a testimony later on. Or another time. But this is real. They can plant something on you. You'll never even know it for a year. And you wonder why your, your world is upside down. you got a plant. They've put a seed in you somewhere. By an object. Or they can even give you a, a digestive curse by you eating something that they gave you. Somebody that wanted to put a curse on you. You start having problems. Curanderos love to throw polvitos. Powders. People's food. Throw them around their houses, bring curses. Uh, all the religions have this type of stuff. Okay? So you need to be aware of religion, at least at a top level, people. You need to know what they do. What, what, are, what are their common practices? What can they do? If they, if they targeted you and they wanted to put something on your house and something's going wrong, how, how are you going to find that out? I lived through all of that. I know that stuff. It's real to me, it's tangible. You can feel it. You can feel the curse. You can feel the oppression. You can feel the power of the enemy. You hear sounds. Your electrical lights turning off and on. Fear that grips you that you never had a fear like that before. There's a devil right there in front of you. You've, some of you have had different experiences like that. And let me tell you, they're real, they're tangible, and they'll scale the daylights out of you. But when I learned that sword... At an early age in my walk, I was able to start handling the demonic place where I came from Amen. and start breaking this stuff. And that's what I want for you today.